What's up, everybody? This is Whiskey in the Six. I'm Rob. Today, I went into the mail and found four beautiful samples from Beth, the Glenfiddich and Balvini Canadian ambassador. Um, so she sent me the Balvini Tune 1509 batch three. This is bottled at 52.5% alcohol. That's what I'll be reviewing today. She sent me these nice 50 milliliter bottles so I'm able to get at least two shots out of it. This shot in particular, which I haven't tried yet, you guys are going to get to experience my first taste of the Balvenie Ton. Sorry, I said ton before, I meant ton. Uh, Balvenie Ton. Um, it has been sitting in here for about 30 minutes, and I'm going to explain to you why in a second. She also sent me Glenfiddich Project XX, bottled at 47%. This is not released just yet in Canada. Look for it in the new year. It will be available at the LCBO very shortly. <clears throat> Glenfiddich IPA, also still not available at the LCBO, but will also be available in the new year. This is 43%. So the Project XX is 47%. The IPA is 43%. And then another beautiful, expensive bottle, Glenfiddich 26 year old. For those of you that know something about this one, you know that it's upwards of high fives, depending on where you get it. Okay, so it's an expensive bottle. This is bottled at 43% as well. So those will be my next three reviews following the Balvenie Ton 1509 Batch 3. Okay, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about the Balvenie Ton before I get into it, and then I'm gonna nose it and taste it. So, there are 31 casks used in the Balvenie Ton. It's a, it's a single malt, but it's got 31 different casks married into the single malt. The youngest is 23 years old. So the youngest whiskey used in the bottle of Balvenie Ton 1509 batch three is from 1993. The oldest is from 1989. There are 12 sherry butts with vintages varying from 1989 to 1992. <clears throat> the butts are the 500 liter barrels. They're, they're the, the, one of the larger kinds of barrels you can use. Okay. Then there's 11 American oak hogsheads filled in 1989. Those hogsheads are half the size of the butts. So hogsheads are actually 250 uh, liters. Then they have eight refill American oak butts filled fr uh, from 1992 to 1993, which comprise of your Balvenie Ton 1509, all right? I want to thank Beth again. I, I couldn't believe it. When I saw the packet, when I saw what was inside the package, I couldn't believe what she had sent me. These bottles, if you have to add up the price and buy them at the LCBO, you're looking at $2,000 Canadian. Okay, so very, very generous. Something that I probably wouldn't get to review if they weren't actually sent to me. So I'm super, super excited about it. All right. So. Um, as most of you know, Balvenie, pretty much every single one of their expressions except for a couple are unchill filtered. This one included. This is unchill filtered, no added color. Okay, if you have a look at the color, it's very dark. Okay, it varies from 23 to 27 years old. So you have some old sherry wh sherry whiskey in here, all right, and a lot of it is first fill. So that's pretty exciting stuff. Okay. On the nose. 
Actually, very quickly, I just, I don't know if you can pick it up, but as I tip this in the glass a little bit, you can see the legs are just fantastic. So it's a very viscous, very thick whiskey. Okay. <clears throat> On the nose. There's a ton of fruit in there. All kinds of different fruit. Raisins, sultanas, but even fresh fruit like like really ripe cantaloupe. Super, super sweet orange. Some chocolate in there, milk chocolate. This is the type of jam that you can literally smell for a long period of time. It is so complex. Every time you bring your nose back to it, you get something different. Get some honey in there. Actually, a lot of honey. Super, super impressive nose, actually. Again, this is bottled at 52.2%, but you wouldn't be able to tell from the nose. I wouldn't put this higher than 43%. If, I, if someone passed the glass to me, there's no way I would think this is higher. It does have some of those distinct Balvenie smells to it, which is very nice. Very identifiable whiskey. Very, very nice. Very, very nice nose. If I had to mark the nose, this is as close to an A plus as it gets for me. Okay. On the palate. Super sweet, incredibly fruity. <clears throat> you pick up the orange, the, the ripe cantaloupe, the sweetness of raisins and dates, and like I said, sultanas, even like brown sugars, chocolate, honey. It's super sweet, <clears throat> very thick. Definitely a dessert whiskey something you would want to have after dinner. It's super creamy. That's the best word to use for it. It's incredibly creamy. Fantastic. Really, really good stuff. Okay, I'm gonna try it again. Even better on the second. Not very drying at all, but the little bit that you do get is very nice. <clears throat> There's a, a touch of heat to it, which is nice. It opens it up a little bit. It gives you that cinnamon and really, really good stuff. You definitely pick up the wood influence in this whiskey. A lot of cinnamon. How am I gonna mark this? Right. This is as close to an A plus as it gets. As close to an A plus as I've gotten so far this year. I'm trying to think if there's anything I've tasted better this year.
and it gets softer with every single sip. A ton of ripe fruit, a ton of chocolate and cinnamon, orange especially. It's just, it's really, really good. That's an A for me. That's fantastic. Um, those of you that like adding a drop of water, you can probably do that here. As long as you don't add too much. Older whiskeys are a little bit more delicate. If you add too much water, you can ruin it. Okay, so be very careful if you're adding water here. That's an A, really, really good stuff. It's old stuff. If you can get your hands on a bottle, I highly recommend you do. In Alberta, I believe uh, a friend of mine told me from Alberta that it's going for around $350, which uh, world value, that's probably your best bang for your buck. Over here, it's close to 900. So if you can buy it elsewhere, I highly recommend you do so. In the States, I think you're looking at around $400 if it's even still available, which it might not be. These things go quick. There was only nine, less than 9,000 uh, bottles released of the Balvenie ton 15, uh, 1509 batch three. So very few, if any bottles left, not too many around here. If I, I, don't, I haven't seen any in a while. So um, keep your eye out for it. If you can pick it up, I highly recommend you do so. You will not regret it. It's definitely worth the dollars. In the UK, I think it's going for about 220 pounds on um, Masters of Malt. Okay, so check that out. That still works out too if you're a Canadian, over $400, but like I said, definitely worth your dollars. Okay, so that's an A. Thanks again to Beth. Um, I look forward to doing all of these, especially because the Glenfiddich Project XX and the Glenfiddich IPA are, no, are not available in Ontario just yet. So that's gonna be very exciting. And Glenfiddich 26 year old is pretty much unattainable for me because it's over $500, so really, really good stuff. I'm looking forward to all, all three of these, and this one was fantastic as well. If you like this video, if you've seen some of my other stuff, subscribe below. Um, you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter. On Instagram, I'm at whiskey in the six. On Twitter, I'm at whiskey underscore in underscore the underscore six. And on Facebook, you can follow me as well. Find me as Rob Reviews, okay? Uh, thank you to Glenn Fittick. That's an awesome dram, Balvini especially, uh, in particular over here. Um, Beth runs both Balvini and Glenfiddich for Canada, so that's why I was able to get a little bit of both. They're both under the William Grant umbrella, so that's why, okay? Cheers, guys.